something happening inside of Syria that may very well be hinting at one of the first cooperative efforts of Russia and the United States working together for a common goal and a common good. In this case, it's not so much battling ISIS, but in this case here, it looks like that the United States and the Russian militaries have joined up to protect the Kurds inside of Syria. And if that happens to be the case, it'll be one of the first times that this has ever happened uh, in, in modern history between the two here, and especially for that, for the Kurdish, uh, Kurdish people and them trying to gain their own autonomy. Uh, I bring this out because those of you that may be keeping up with the war that's going on inside of Syria, there's been a lot of clashes that have happened with the Kurds, the YPG uh, and the YPJ, who have been clearly fighting ISIS all along in this battle for the last five years, but the Turkish forces absolutely have a hatred for the Kurdish people, both those that live inside of Turkey and those that live inside of northern Iraq and southern, uh, northern Syria, I might say there. But recently, I shared with you guys how th there were special forces of the United States seen inside of Mumbai. Mumbai is a northern city of Syria to the west of the Euphrates River there, and of course, the Turkish military was not very happy about it. They had sent warnings to the United States and if the United States uh, needed to get the Kurds on the other side of the Euphrates River. Well, then we saw a small convoy of Humvees inside of Syria there and uh, uh, or near Mumbai there and begin to wonder what was going on. Well, then RT News finally released yesterday that a larger convoy of special forces were there inside of Mumbai uh, from, from the United States, as you can see clearly here on your screen and behind you. And then we find out that Russia, doing the exact same thing here, apologize for that there, I lost the actual photo that we had. Let me. Let me pull that back up here for you. But also that we had Russia uh, also inside of Mumbai. Uh, their own forces there on uh, Lorenzo's channel here already happened. And that became a big surprise. Something that no one was expecting was to see both the United States and Russian forces in Mumbai. Uh, but that's exactly what uh, Lorenzo was sharing here on his own page there. Uh, he's not even himself really sure uh, if this, if for a fact it is Mumbai, is something that he put on his post there. Uh, but we do see, we see aid convoy, our aid truck there as well, uh, and some of the photos here. And then of course, uh, it appears to be uh, a couple of other types of vehicles there, possibly more military, but clearly both Russian and U.S. forces are inside of Mumbai. I actually lost the one that I had over here as well. Wow, I don't know how that happened. But anyway, um, I wanted to share that with you guys just to show that to you. Now, how do we know though that uh, Russia also is supportive of the Kurds? We've seen different news uh, stories come out, both the United States and Russia both being supportive of the Kurds. Uh, but the problem is, is when it came to Turkey, neither one has been willing to stand up for the Kurdish people when it came to Turkey. When Turkey puts the pressure, as the Turkish uh, President Erdogan has said to the United States, you need to choose either uh, Turkey or the Kurds. And uh, at the time, President Obama was not willing to side for the Kurds and lose his relationship with Turkey. And neither has President Trump really, really, really been willing to do that either. Uh, but we can see here on Al Monitor, uh, this was called the Turkey Pulse, Syria rejects Russian proposal for Kurdish Federation. So even President uh, Putin has been pushing for uh, the Kurdish people to have their own autonomy, their own state inside of Syria there in the northern region there. And it said here dozens of Russian air aircraft land daily at the Kamameem Air Base near Latkia, Syria, one such aircraft from Moscow that landed on September 17th, that was 2016, uh, uh, didn't attract much attention. But as passengers, eight officials of Russian foreign and defense ministries were carrying documents that one day could uh, alter the political scene of the region. But 
not on that day, they write in the, in the article here, the documents obtained by Al-Monitor included the memorandum of the intent regarding the possibility of the Syrian government granting Syrian Kurdistan special status within the framework of Syria. President Putin has also been calling that there, would be no, there should be no negotiations without the Kurds involved in that for peace in Syria. So I thought that was very interesting in light of all the things that are happening there. Again, both U.S. forces and Russian forces in Mumbai and apparently working together to protect the Kurdish people from the Turkish there. Uh, in other news as well, RT showing that China urges North Korea uh, to halt nuclear missile tests to prevent head-on collision with the U.S. Uh, says Beijing has called on North Korea to suspend its nuclear missile activities to avoid a head-on collision with the U.S. and South Korea. In exchange, Washington and Seoul should halt drills, Chinese Foreign Minister uh, Wang Shi said. To defuse the looming crisis in the Korean uh, Peninsula, China proposes that a, as a first step, the DPRK, that's the uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea may suspend its nuclear and missile activities in exchange for the halt of the large-scale U.S. Uh, ROK, which is the Republic of Korea, uh, and their exercises that are continually going on, which uh, Pyongyang uh, uh, claims as being a threat to its own national security, and also more or less saying it is a declaration of war. Um, another thing that is going on here, and this is something that we brought out in our, in our broadcast. If you remember the broadcast we did yesterday here, breaking Trump's U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem will affect major prophecy. Um, and I, I wanted to bring this out, and we're going to go into this a little bit deeper on the Noon Institute, but I'll just share a little bit here with you. In that prophecy, in Zechariah, as we brought out here for you, is that in Zechariah, especially verse 5, And the chiefs of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength through the Lord of hosts their God. So we know that the chiefs have nothing to do with, say, parliamentary members of Israel today, or Knesset members, we might say, of Israel today. It couldn't be, because they're saying that the inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. All right, in Hebrews, just what it says, Elohim, Elohe Him right there is their God. So parliament members of Israel are not going around as chiefs of Judah, so to speak, claiming that they have, uh, that, that, they're, that they are being strengthened by the God of Israel, so to speak, kind of paraphrasing that on there. But there's got to be somewhere along the line, a chief, not just a chief, but a chief friend, a chief friend of who? Judah, the house of Judah, in this case here, which is who is in the land today. And this is why we were looking at this as a biblical prophecy. Not only that, but there is such a major problem all right, with what is happening over both Judah and Jerusalem, as the prophecy says here. Behold, I will make Jerusalem, verse 2, a cup of staggering into the peoples round about upon, upon Judah. Also shall it fall to be in siege against Jerusalem. Uh, in other words, they'll be in siege against Judah and Jerusalem is really the right way to, to, to translate that there. Uh, who is in siege? It's the neighbors. It's the peoples round about. All right. Now, to give you a good example of that, the, uh, this is King Abdullah. This just came out. Justin on Facebook, uh, a good friend of ours there, sent me this uh, particular article. And so I wanted to quickly just share this with you as another breaking news to, to strengthen what I'm telling you about on this. It says, the king meets with U.S. Jewish leaders over peace process. Talks cover threats to regions, security, and stability. This was in Amman, Jordan. His ma oh, they say his majesty. I don't think any king is a majesty, not in this earth realm anyway. King Abdullah on Sunday discussed with a delegation of U.S. Jewish leaders efforts to push forward the Middle East peace process and the latest regional developments. During the meeting held at the Basman Palace, King Abdullah stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to resume effective negotiations between the Palestinians and the Israelis based on a two-state solution as the only solution to end the conflict, according to the royal court statement. 
They say that he reiterated the need to reach a just and comprehensive peace agreement, which would pave the way for a durable security and stability for the region and its people. He warned of the risk of failure to achieve the envisioned peace of the ensuring despair and frustration. And by the way, uh, he's also very much against uh, the Trump administration of moving the U.S. Embassy uh, to, uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, as he says, it'll only uh, create more uh, unrest and violence in the region. So uh, again, clearly it seems that the people in the Trump administration, and it's not just Donald Trump, it's his administration, are fulfilling biblical prophecy by aligning themselves and standing with the Jewish people. Now what's really interesting here, I want to share with you, another way that you can translate this word right here, aluf uh, in Hebrew, uh, is the word for champion. So if you look at verse 5, and the chiefs of Judah or the champions of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength through the Lord of, of hosts, their God. And in that day I will make the the, uh, the champions of Judah like a pan of fire among the wood. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a champion or a chief for the house of Judah in modern times that is also a military force. All right? Now I've even thought, could it be the two witnesses? Maybe, but it doesn't look like it. When you really begin to look at the scripture, I don't think it's speaking of the two witnesses. All right? But when we take it cheap, just to show you what I mean by this, let me just show you in modern Hebrew. I want to show you something. Let's go to Google Translate. I did it up here already for you, but I'll take and, and close it out. All right, let's just say, if you want to say, for example, Trump is a champion of Israel. All right, you want to translate it out. All right, then you have the word Trump right there, transliterated in Hebrew. Trump who aluf Yisrael, a champion of Israel. Okay, or you can say uh, they, um, they are champions, we'll do it plural, champions of Israel. Again, ulafe the word aluf, which is the Hebrew word that is being used here in Zechariah. So you could say chief, but actually the word chief by itself is not the correct way to translate, translate the word aluf. You would say chief friend. It's like a, 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 a major important friend there. And I cannot stress the importance of how, how important I believe this is. It has nothing to do with the politics of Donald Trump. It has nothing to do with you agree with him on this. Some people say, well, he's a Freemason, he's this or that. I'm not looking at him as, as far as the way he is is there. This is dealing with, this is dealing, you have to understand what this is dealing with here in the scripture right here. Ulafe is plural, all right? So it's more than just one person. There is a, there is champions of the house of Judah. There is a group of people that have a military power to back them up that are standing. For who? For the house of Judah. And again, it could be, it could be leaning to the two witnesses. But I personally think this is a, this is a government. And, and regardless of Trump's politics on a lot of other issues, I, I don't agree with him in, in, in quite a few things. I have to admit that I don't. But when it comes to this here, he has taken a stand with Israel. Could it be because he just to advance his purpose to become president? Well, maybe so. Again, it doesn't say that it, it's Donald Trump is the champion of Israel. But there are those that are chief friends of Israel or champions of Israel that will stand with them and are willing to take military action to protect the house of Judah over this whole issue of Jerusalem. That's why I put Trump in there as well because he's talking about moving that embassy to Jerusalem. And again, that's probably from outside, uh, outside pressure on him because of those that have been advising him to carry through with the uh, Congress and Senate approval of 1995 to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And of course, that move of the embassy is what's igniting all of the Middle East against not only the Jewish people living in the land of Israel today, but also against them over Jerusalem. So anyway, uh, we'll be sharing a little bit deeper on this on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research there on our YouTube, <coughs> excuse me, YouTube channel there. So if you'd like to look at this in a deeper perspective, join us over there. Don't forget, though, 
Fascinating, fascinating evidence what we have right here uh, already happened showing the Russian military there uh, inside of Mumbai. And not only is he showing the Russian military, in fact, I can actually show you the American military as well because uh, uh, Lorenzo here had pub published both of those on his page. In fact, that's one of the sources that I had gotten originally uh, was from uh, Lorenzo himself there, uh, one of the early on uh, uh, pieces here showing that there was actually U.S. military forces uh, already on the ground inside Mumbai, um, Syria there, which was just blowing everybody away there. Wow, he's got some, Lorenzo's always got some incredibly good information on his channel there. Here it is right here. This was the first one uh, that I had shared with you guys on March the 4th, and this was the Special Forces of the United States uh, coming into Mumbai, one of the vehicles there was carrying the American flag on its on its uh, on its vehicle, and uh, and then of course now we have the new one that just came out where they're showing the U.S. Uh, forces inside of Mumbai. So Russia and the United States military working together, it appears to be anyway, to help the Kurds to protect them from the threat of Turkey. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching. Israeli News Live.